Hi, I'm pianist and composer Daniel Kelly. Really thrilled to be here and really excited to be showcasing with my group Shakespeare in Jazz at this year's APAP conference in New York City. That's happening Sunday, January 12th at the Hilton Hotel on the second floor. It's the Regent Parlor from 9.30 to 10. But anyway, Shakespeare in Jazz, what is that? It's a, a project I created because I was traveling all over the country and I saw that there were Shakespeare festivals in towns big and small. And if you're like me, uh, maybe you found that Shakespeare can be hard to understand. So um, I wanted to find a doorway into his language through something that I love to do, which is to write and uh, perform jazz music with my friends. So I explored his language, looked at the plays, and found certain passages that I could turn into jazz songs that we could uh, perform. And we'd actually get people in the audience singing along. So some of these famous phrases like, if music be the food of love, play on, or double, double toil and trouble. These have become jazz songs um, that are performed my band with my band with an amazing jazz vocalist uh, singing these words and also getting the audiences to sing call and response style these words too. So it's really cool because the concert, you're having uh, experience with jazz and improvisation, but you're also exploring this language of Shakespeare. And unwittingly, by singing it, you're kind of learning some Shakespeare too. And I found that by doing this, this is my doorway into understanding the brilliance of his language, which is why his plays are still being performed 400 years after his death. Um, and you know, he was an improviser too. I, I imagine him when he was writing these, he was playing with language. He was turning nouns into verbs, turning verbs into nouns, creating phrases and words that we actually still use today. Words like amazing and eyeball and puppy dog, if you can believe that. And phrases like knock, knock, who's there? And vanish into thin air, wear your heart on your sleeve. These are all phrases that Shakespeare invented so I sense the spirit of play and improvisation in his writing uh, that I do as a jazz improviser. And me and my band were playing along, or playing, playing a, around with melody, harmony, and rhythm, just the way he played around with words. So it's an interesting combination to explore together. And uh, we have a lot of fun doing it. Um, the thing that I love about improvisation is, uh, that when you're creating a jazz solo, this is something that is happening in the moment. It's never the same. And that's what drew me to jazz in the beginning. Uh, I remembering that the first concert I went to hear, my father took me to hear a solo piano concert. It was Herbie Hancock, one of uh, my inspirations. And it was a, an amazing experience for me to hear him perform. And uh, one of the things that I remember the most was when he uh, was about to play something and he got to the microphone. He said, okay, now I'm gonna sit down and, and I'm gonna play a improvisation. I have no idea what it's going to be. I'm just gonna sit down and play. And uh, as a young boy, just hearing him create a piece of music that he had not premeditated, it was just emerging in the moment and he was developing and building this, this amazing piece of music, the structure, it really made a deep impact on me. And uh, that's something that I carry into my, my life. And it drew me to jazz music uh, deeply to choose my life, uh, to commit to that music. And uh, that's something we weave into uh, um, Shakespeare and jazz as well. So we're using his language, but yet we're improvising as jazz musicians. It's really a, a jazz concert but with lyrics by Shakespeare. You know, that's an interesting th thing too, is that Shakespeare actually wrote uh, lyrics to songs. There were songs that were sung in his plays, uh, but the music has not survived. Uh, the words have. So that's a fun challenge for a composer like myself to s set his words that are already lyrics to new music. And it's really fun. As a jazz musician, I'm using all the different styles within jazz as well. We are, um, one of the songs is set to a, a salsa, you know, Afro-Cuban jazz. Another song, we in, incorporate reggae feel into it or, or different types of funk feels as well as swing and jazz. So, um, you know, that's the beautiful thing I love about jazz too is that it's, it's really encompassing. It takes all these different uh, musical forms and 
you can envelop and bring those styles into this language of improvisation and group interaction that makes it so vital and exciting for audiences and that, and for performers too. It's really exciting for everyone in the band to be playing because it's different all the time. Um, we're using these words, but we're playing around with them, um, scatting them as well. The vocalist is doing that and getting people to sing along. So it's really fun. Um, yeah, so we performed with Shakespeare and jazz all over the country. It's been really successful with all ages of audiences, believe it or not. We played for jazz fans at jazz concerts, but we've also played a lot for student audiences where students get bussed into a performing arts center and they're having a really, um, you know, a first experience with Shakespeare and a first experience with jazz, which sets them up to think, man, I really like jazz. It's exciting. I really like Shakespeare and poetry. That's exciting. So that's been really fun. So there's an interesting educational element to this um, project as well, but we're not really changing what we do. We're, we're performing a jazz concert and it's alive and vital. And whether you're uh, in elementary school or whether you're a seasoned jazz aficionado, you're, you're really enjoying this music. The band is killing. I play piano, we have bassist, drummer, and then an amazing vocalist. I work with different vocalists who are all um, world-class and have their own vibrant, alive careers. And people uh, are just feeling the energy from the stage and the excitement. And um, yeah, I can't wait to share with you. And I think maybe it's a good time to, to hear some, some of the band play. Here's a couple different uh, concert excerpts. for you I have a question for you 
Yeah, so we have a, we have a lot of fun. And um, yeah, so you heard the first vocalist was Frederick Johnson, who I've been working with for almost 20 years uh, with all sorts of different projects. And uh, he's astounding talent. He's opened up for Miles Davis and Aretha Franklin. And then the other vocalist was Nicole Zoraitis, who uh, this past year won the Grammy for Best Jazz Vocal Album. She's an astounding vocalist. And I work with other vocalists too. Uh, the vocalist at the showcase will be Reina Sokolov Gonzalez. She's an amazing up and coming singer who, um, you know, has more than a million and a half Spotify plays of her music. She's incredible talent. So um, the vocalists are always world class, and it's a lot of fun to uh, just to hear that to hear that music and hear the audiences uh, singing along. The first clip with Frederick singing and with the band um, that was in the Callum Theater in Palm Desert, and those were uh, students, uh, grades K through six. If you can believe that, they were having a great time singing along, and. Um, yeah, it was really, really fun. <laughs> uh, it's great to see those. Um, you can hear more clips, uh, video clips. I got tons of video clips of this on my website. It's www.danielkellymusic.com. And uh, all my social handles will be uh, connected to this as well. Instagram is Daniel Kelly Piano. And uh, yeah, it's just a real joy to be able to uh, bring this to music and see audiences uh, really, really respond to the project. Um, you know, I've had jazz fans come up to me and say, hey, I didn't even know I really liked Shakespeare. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's really fun to meet people afterward and see how they are just kind of glowing with enthusiasm, excitement uh, for hearing uh, this music a different way. And we've performed at places like the Stella Adler Acting Studio, which is a place where uh, Robert De Niro, Meryl Streep, they trained and were performing for actors and directors who've spent their whole career engaging with Shakespeare. And they're just as excited because they have never heard Shakespeare done in this way. Um, the thing is, is that you don't have to um, know anything about Shakespeare. Uh, that's the idea, is that it's very approachable. So you don't have to be an expert. Sometimes you see the word Shakespeare and you just feel like, oh, that's going to be over my head. I don't get it. This is a great introductory way to get into it. And that was my whole idea, to make it connect um, you know, with people in a visceral way through the music and the words so that there's, there's no knowledge you need to know about Shakespeare. Just come and have fun, have fun, have fun. Um, so that said, we're going to be showcasing at APAP again in uh, New York City. Once again, that information is um, Sunday, January 12th at the Hilton Hotel in the Regent's Parlor. It's on the second floor, 9.30 to 10 p.m. And I'm represented by Siegel Artist Management. You can talk to Jennifer Morris. And they are in the America Hall, America's Hall 1, booth 378, America's Hall 1, booth 378, Siegel Artist Management. Um, thank you so much. I'm pianist and composer Daniel Kelly. S thanks so much for having me on the show and hope to, uh, hope to see you at APAP and in the future.